everyone, it's Janice, welcome back. In today's video, I wanna share with you my top tips for having a great time on your trip to Disney World and making the best use of your time, making it as affordable as possible, yada, 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 all those things you wanna to do to have fun um, while you're on your vacation. So first off, if you're traveling with kids, I recommend instead of using a diaper bag, you use a backpack. Um, I personally bring my own stroller while I'm there, but you can also rent the strollers. I notice most people bring their own stroller. The reason I say bring a backpack instead of a diaper bag is pretty much for every ride, you're gonna need to park the stroller. Um, so that means if you don't wanna leave all of your belongings behind in the stroller, you're gonna need to carry them with you. And especially if you're carrying a small child, it's probably gonna be easier to carry a backpack than a diaper bag. So yes, we learned that the hard way the first day we went with our kid. Um, I have been um, going to the parks frequently for the last 10 years. I was a cast member for eight years and now I'm a pass holder, but all the time I was a pass holder, or excuse me, all the time I, I was a cast member, I didn't have a kid. Now my kid is about 17 months old, so, now it's just a totally different world now that I have kids. So I've learned some new things since I've been there. Um, I also recommend that you bring food. Even, um, let's say you're coming from out of, out of state. I know this can be a lot more difficult to bring food if you don't have access to the grocery store or anything while you're on vacation. But a lot of the non-perishable food you can bring with you, you can bring sodas into the park or water, or whatever it is. I We always bring several water bottles and fill them up. Um, the food that we typically like to bring, uh, we just bring in a cooler, obviously things that you can't, you don't have access to a microwave while you're in there, so you're not going to be able to reheat it. So think about foods that stay cold um, or that don't need to be reheated, basically. So we'll bring like chicken salad, we'll bring like a string cheese for our son, um, fruit, veggies, chips, water, protein bars, protein shake, whatever it is. Um, I recommend bringing food that can bring down the cost quite a bit, even if you just brought a little snack for everybody. Planning your fast passes is obviously huge. Disney has made huge improvements in how you can plan your fast passes. The magic bands are a godsend as well. Um, I will discuss a little bit later which rides I recommend you always and never fast pass at each park. And don't forget your sunscreen and dress lightly. Florida is extremely hot. Uh, don't underestimate the power of the Florida sun when you're going to be out all day. Uh, I also recommend that you utilize the baby centers. I have recommendations for where to go for each park um, when it's time for baby to take a nap, or not even just baby, just young kid. If it's time for your young child who naps to get to sleep, um, I'll discuss at each park. So let's just get into at Magic Kingdom, where I'd recommend you can take them. Um, at all of the parks, I believe, have a 3D show, and that's a great place to just kind of calm your child down, get somewhere nice and cool. Um, I would recommend going to a 3D show, trying to get them to go to sleep, unless you can just stroll your kid to sleep. That works with my kid, um, but sometimes we just like take them on a little dark ride. Um, Haunted Mansion is actually like an eight minute ride, I wanna say, that's a good one. The Carousel of Progress at Magic Kingdom is like 20 minutes. Super boring show. <laughs> I like the Carousel of Progress too, but for kids, it's it can be a good one for them to fall asleep. At Epcot, the little sleeper ride can be uh, Ellen's Universe of Energy. This is a 40 minute ride in the dark. Great place for you to take a nap even if you need. Um, Spaceship Earth. Uh, all of these rides double, so if you were kind of skipping past this, um, thinking like, oh, I don't have kids who nap, I don't need to think about this. Think about this for you. This is also the great place to go during the heat of the day if you need somewhere to cool off or if it's raining, which Florida, it rains a lot, especially in the summer. Our rainy season is like May to November. It rains pretty much every day at some point during the afternoon. So at some point during your trip, it's probably gonna rain and you're gonna wanna go inside somewhere. If that's not the time when you're eating or on a ride, you're gonna be looking for somewhere to go probably. You don't wanna waste your time just standing around. Um, Studios, I don't feel like there's a lot there for, um, I'm just going to be honest, that's my least favorite park, so I don't go there as much. I do know plenty about that park, but there just isn't as much there for um, just like an opportunity for your kid to fall asleep, basically, is what I'm talking about. Um, there is the Little Mermaid show is inside. It's a puppet show. It's like 15 minutes long or so. That's one place you could go. Um, you're, if you have a young kid, they're really gonna like this, but it's the, the Disney Disney Junior like Playhouse show. That one is inside, and if your kid really was tired, you could probably go to the back of that one and like face away um, from the theater and you know try to get them to nap. Um, so I talked about planning fast passes, so definitely do that before you get to the park. You can plan three pass, fast passes for each day. I can't really tell you which rides to do that for because everyone has different rides that are their favorite or rides they don't care about or maybe rides they went on last time that they don't want to go on again. 
But I will say at each park, there's certain ones that do tend to always have a quite a long line. So if you want to go on them, I recommend you get a fast pass at Magic Kingdom. This would be Big Thunder Mountain, Space Mountain. Peter Pan's flight is super popular. I don't know why. I like that ride. It's really short though. And that line can be like an hour long, all, pretty much like the whole day. So that's one that I would never wait an hour for. Um, the Buzz Lightyear ride, surprisingly, has a really long line a lot of the time. So that could be a good one to get a fast pass for if you want. At Epcot, pretty much if you're going to Epcot, everybody's going on Soren. Fast pass Soren. Do not wait for that. I mean, well, actually, that one, I would wait for it. It's that good. If you really are only going to Disney like once, um, I'd say wait for it if you didn't get a fast pass. But that is like the ride where if we're going to Disney for the day and we didn't get a fast pass for Soren, let's say the fast passes were all gone, we're like, mm -mm, not waiting for that one. Um, at Studios, this ride's been out for a few years now, but it's still super popular. It's so much fun and it is very long line is the Toy Story Mania ride. That You don't want to miss that ride. It is so much fun and definitely get a fast pass for it. And at Animal Kingdom, this is kind of like the same as Epcot. If you're going to Epcot, you're probably going to go on Soarin'. It's great. Everyone loves it. If you're going to Animal Kingdom, you're probably going to go on the Safari. It's so unique. It's really incredible. That line is not terrible to wait in. Um, and then a lot of it can be covered and something interesting to look at. Some lines I like to wait for because I, I like the way they look or I like walking through them. But um, yeah, Animal Kingdom, the safari, the line can get quite long and that's something you really don't want to miss. I do have some tips for meeting the characters as well as if you have young kids there or even a lot of adults really enjoy meeting the characters. So um, way, a way to see the characters without waiting in line is booking a dining experience where you know the characters come. I did do um, a two-part video about all my recommendations for restaurants at Disney, so I will link those down below. Highly recommend you check those out because obviously we all eat and food is a big part of your vacation and your day at Magic Kingdom, so I, it would just be way too long if I talked about all my food tips in this video besides bringing food, so check those out, but I do recommend booking a dining experience. Um, also, my biggest tip for food though is to book a buffet, actually, I really think it is worth it. And I always, I like say this to people I meet all the time, which is why I finally decided to make a Disney tips video. If you are, so if you're going to do a buffet, if you're going to eat at Disney, I recommend you get lunch, book a lunch for like 11 or 12, load up for the day. And you may not even really be hungry for dinner or just like buy something light for dinner while you're at Disney. And the it can be nice to just have that long lunch in the middle of the day when it's getting hot and it becomes less of a chore and more of a fun experience. A lot of times when I haven't um, eaten at the restaurants, I feel like the waiting in line is such a hassle. Like I feel like I'm wasting time. Like, oh my gosh, I'm standing in this line for like a $10 item that I'm just gonna like eat in a hurry and like look around for a bench, like a hot bench to sit on. It's just not that pleasant. So sometimes, you know, that's what I do if I, didn't bring enough food or didn't book a restaurant that day, but um, a, a restaurant can really be the way to go. At least one of the days on your trip, I recommend just going for it at, at one of these buffets. Um, okay, so back to meeting the characters though. Anytime you're meeting the characters when you're standing in line, have your book open. If you're getting an autograph, have your pen ready. This just allows you to have more time with the characters. If you're, the character is wasting time with you needing to open the book or ask you like, where's your pen? It, it's taking away from time you can have with them. Um, keep in mind that many of the characters don't speak, um, but they really do like to interact with you. So ask them yes or no questions or ask them a question where they can animate their answer to you. Um, they'll really enjoy doing that and they, they want to have a fun experience with you and make a memory for you. Um, and also when you're in line, plan out what, what pictures you might want to take. Don't get up there and be like, oh, mom, mom, did you want to be in the picture? Or... Oh, what are we doing? Are we doing a picture? Is it just me? Um, you know, or how, how should I pose? What do I want to do? Think about that when you're in line. So make the most of your time. It will really go a lot smoother and be a lot more fun. And again, you'll have more time with the characters if you were ready. Have your book ready. Have your camera ready. Say, okay, I know I want one of just me. Okay, now me and mom. Okay, now me and this person. And there are... Um, character attendants there that are there to help make the experience better and you can they're happy to take a picture for you just ask them nicely and give them your phone and they'll take to take whatever photos you want um, and also keep in mind some of the characters 
um, just don't see that well. So if you're on the side or down below, they they just may not see you that well. If you're like a, a little small kid, you, there could be like a small kid hugging their leg and the only way they would know it is because they could they could feel the kid um, at their leg. So, um, and if you have a child that's scared of the characters, just take it easy. Um, again, I can't stress this enough. The characters really do want you to have a great time with them and the characters want to have a fun make a fun memory with you. So if a kid's not terrified, screaming bloody murder, try to, uh, you can get in between the character and the child. So it'd be like mom with the baby over here and the character over here and mom can like, you know, nicely hug Mickey or give him a high five. High five could be a good little way to get the kid to warm up instead of saying like, oh kid, hug Mickey. Or, you know, stand next to Mickey. If you just are holding your child and you could just say gently like, hey, high five Mickey or mama's gonna high five Mickey. That helps. Um, my, my kid's actually kind of scared of the characters. He loves Mickey at home. He's like all Mickey all the time. But we've taken him to meet Mickey like a dozen times. And he is, he's not in the camp of like screaming bloody murder. But he's a little nervous. He's a little scared. But we end up getting him away from the experience not, not traumatized by just simply me being in between him and the character and me just saying, you know, oh, Mickey's so nice and just give Mickey a hug or whatever. So, um, and, and try again, if your kid is scared of one of the characters, they may not be scared of all of them. So, um, the characters can be really jarring for young kids at first by how tall they are. Um, but anyways, I hope if you're going to the park soon that you have a wonderful time. I hope these tips were helpful. Definitely check out my restaurant review videos and, uh, I hope to Come, come at you soon with some more Disney tips because I have a lot of them. So take care. I'll see you all soon. Bye.